Karma chose my seat. Destiny can have a very sick sense of humor, if it so desires. In today's story, a chosen seat sets off a chain of events in an innocent passenger's life that will cause, well, let's not spoil it, shall we? Many of my family and friends have said that I was very fortunate because considering all of the traveling that I have done by air, that I have not encountered any kind of dangerous or other crazy experience. That is true. But if we take that expression about throwing mud at the wall until some of it sticks and apply it to my very uneventful track record of flying, I guess that's the story I'm about to tell you. In March of 1990, I was on a long-haul flight from San Francisco to Paris for a major business conference. I had already been at my company for more than 10 years, and I had already gone on more than 43 long-haul flights to various countries around Europe and Asia without a hitch. The flight was not that crowded, and I was sitting next to a young gentleman in about his early 30s. I had the aisle seat, and he had the window seat. There was no one else in our row and only an empty middle seat between us. The flight was actually not that crowded and the nearest people sitting to us were at least four rows behind us. We were in the second row at the front of the plane. There was nobody in the front row in front of us either. I could have moved to the front row, but I generally don't like it because I can't explain it, but I like the feeling of having a seat in front of me. In addition, I like the tray that folds down in those kind of seats because it gives more support when I have a food tray in front of me. Our flight was taking off late in the evening and the population of the plane had already gone to sleep after a quick drink and a bag of peanuts. The airline attendant had the lights turned off and I decided to also take the opportunity to doze off a bit. I woke up about two hours later in the same dark cabin that I had fell asleep in. I was a little freaked out to see the person next to me looking at me as if they were waiting for me to wake up to talk to me. Although this took me by surprise, I remained calm and just decided to be friendly. Hi there, I said. He just smiled and nodded his head. I briefly introduced myself and extended my hand to shake his. He took my hand and gripped it rather firmly and just kept shaking my hand. When I tried to slow my handshake down and politely unlock my hand from his grip, he grabbed my hand a little tighter and told me the following. Are you afraid to die on one of these things? My insides began to shake, but I tried to remain as calm as I could. Nah, nah, it's the safest way to travel, you know, were the words that I used to him. He then leaned a little bit closer towards me. I got a knife in my pocket that I'm going to use to cut my steak with. Inside, I was literally shaking but I used every ounce of strength in my body to remain calm. I had this feeling that if I showed the slightest ounce of fear, that this lunatic would play on that. Hey man, I don't blame you. This crappy cutlery they give us is, isn't, isn't the sharpest thing in the world, I know. I should mention at this point that he was still holding my hand rather tightly and not letting go. I know that the majority of you folks out there might try and pry your hand away from him, but I just felt at that moment that I should just sit there and not move a muscle the sweat from between our two palms were getting wet and I felt that after a bit of time I could probably just slide my hand away from his grip anyway. I'm leaving my old life behind and I need you to help me was what he said. I couldn't answer him with anything but and how am I supposed to help you with that? He then spent what seemed like the next hour mumbling off some paranoid conspiracy theories and political nerdiness that I made every effort to pretend to listen to, but about 90% of what he was saying just flowed in one ear and out the other. I didn't have to pay attention to what this guy was saying, 
to know that I was sitting next to an absolute nutcase who would probably think nothing of doing something stupid just to prove a point. I didn't take my eyes off him for even a second because his dead pan stare had locked me into him with such force that I felt to look away would have caused him to get irritated and I certainly didn't want to make that kind of person irritated. The whole time he was talking, I tried to think of what I could do or possibly think of any excuse I could make to leave him for just those few moments I needed to get the attention of an airline attendant. I saw both of the two airline attendants on duty in our section of the plane pass by my peripheral vision a number of times. It was a pity that I was unable to get their attention, because even if I did, how could I tell them how I felt uncomfortable sitting next to this person when he was right there with us? After he was finished his long speech, assumably about how the world was going to end, he surprisingly turned away from me and looked out of the window. I then had a chance to breathe and continue to think about what the next possible move could be. My bladder, however, was telling me that it was time to make a move to go to the bathroom and relieve myself. But before I could get up from my seat, the man turned back toward me again as if he almost predicted what I was going to do. As soon as our eyes made contact with each other again, he went back into his lecture paranoia about the world. I was starting to get very frustrated inside, and now with having to go to the bathroom I really felt the need to say something. Just as I was about to open my mouth and ask him to excuse me while I went to the bathroom, the flight attendant came out of nowhere and put two trays of food in front of us. After telling us to enjoy our meal, she left the scene. I felt at that moment like I was on a deserted island, and I had woken up to see a boat leaving the island, ending my only chance to escape. I really had to pee, but I didn't feel comfortable about leaving my fresh plate of food in front of this lunatic who might try and poison it for all I knew, so I decided to hold it in and eat. Just as I had started eating my food, he leaned forward uncomfortably close to me and told me not to eat the tomatoes. When I asked him why not, he told me that they had been laced with cyanide. I obviously knew that this wasn't true, but because of my situation and the mental instability of this individual, I guess I was not having tomatoes today. Some of you may call me a wuss for letting this guy disturb me like that but my inner self was telling me not to play with fire in a closed cabin with a nutcase. This had to be the most uncomfortable meal that I had ever eaten in my life. He watched every bite that I took and never even bothered to touch one morsel of his own food. At one point he turned back to his plate, but instead of eating, he just took one of the plastic forks and poked around at the piece of cake that was on his tray for dessert. He didn't eat any of it and just played with it using his fork, as if he was trying to search for something hidden inside the piece of cake. I really felt at this point that I needed to get up the courage to do something and do something fast, because although I didn't know the extent of this guy's mental stability, I was worried that there was a chance that he could snap, and it would mean the safety of myself and everyone on board the plane as well. He might have just been a babbling idiot, but there was just as much chance that he could have been a psychopath. I didn't have much of an appetite because of his presence anyway, so I finished as much of my meal as I could, and then looked around the plane using only my eyeballs and not my head. And then, like seeing an oasis in the middle of the desert, I saw a flight attendant stop in the little kitchenette area that was right next to one of the bathrooms. She was unpacking some packages of tissue and looked like she was going to be there for at least a few moments. Being next to the bathroom, this was my chance to kill two birds with one stone and pretend to go to the bathroom but at the same time get her attention and let her know what was going on as well. With the way the bathroom door opened, there could have been a blind spot and I thought I could actually get the flight attendant's attention from inside the bathroom with the door still open and could be able to speak to her without the man even being aware what was going on. But just as I got up from my seat to take advantage of this opportunity, I felt a hand grab my arm and force me to sit down. This plane is not gonna make it, he said. I asked him what he meant by that. He then told me something that made my insides turn to ice, and just like our conversation I remember it word for word. You had better start counting your blessings now.
because you don't want God to feel disappointed that you didn't appreciate him. Were these simply the words of a madman, or were they an indirect message of a madman that was about to take action? I knew that in any case, I had to act fast. Attention fellow passengers, we hope you are all enjoying your flight, and I would like to take this time to invite all of you to send in your travel stories as well. True or fictional, we would absolutely love to share them on our YouTube channel, podcast, or blog. Links to our social media pages are in the description section below this video. We sincerely hope that you enjoy the rest of the flight, and we ask all of you to please be safe out there. And now... Back to our story. I played it cool and told the man to tell me more about what he thought about the world and how it was created. I remembered vaguely that this was one of the topics that he was rambling about during our conversation that he had with me previously. Even though I didn't pay much attention to it, I heard key words like God and Adam and Eve and so I asked him to continue on his thoughts about it. The man smiled and looked all too pleased to continue talking about this subject. I told the man that I'm going to relieve myself so that I can listen to his story more carefully because I wanted to make sure that I could understand every word that he said when he told me the story. The man nodded his head and I very gently got out of my seat and headed towards the bathroom. The flight attendant was not in the kitchenette area anymore but I had another plan in mind. There was no accident in my timing to ask this man if I could go to the bathroom. The bathroom nearest to us, which would have been in his field of view, was occupied. I knew that the man would not think that it was out of the ordinary for me to travel to a different bathroom since the one nearest to us was occupied, so I didn't feel it was a risk. I walked towards the nearby bathroom and pretended to be frustrated in waiting for that person to come out. I didn't need to act much by pacing up and back like I was holding my urge to urinate because I really did have to go that badly. I then very casually pointed around the room as if I was looking for where the next bathroom was. I then walked away from that bathroom on a certain route that would take me to the next bathroom out of view and completely out of range of that man's vision. After arriving at the next bathroom, I went inside, did my business, and pushed the button inside the bathroom that calls the attendant over. After a few moments, there was a knock on my bathroom door, and when I opened it, I explained to the flight attendant about the gentleman sitting next to me, and how his words almost indirectly hinted at him being some kind of hijacker, or at least someone who we should not overlook as a potential threat and danger to all those aboard the plane. The flight attendant told me to stay in the bathroom for now, and she would come over and get me later. After a few moments, she came and took me to the first class area of the plane, and sat me in a vacant seat and told me not to move from there. After another few moments, two flight attendants had approached me and told me that I would be allowed to stay in first class for the rest of the flight. Apparently, I was told that there was an air marshal who was aboard the plane and was peacefully working at defusing the harmful situation. After a few moments, I was brought a beverage and a snack, and the relief I felt was really beyond words. I never saw the man after we disembarked from the plane, as I had exited out a different exit, and he would have been in the economy section. In addition, I had never found out what had happened to that gentleman. But after giving a statement to airport authority about what the man had said to me, I have done my duty and never heard another word about it. In all fairness, it could be possible that the man was suffering from some kind of mental problem and that he was harmless and only his words were threatening. I obviously don't regret the steps that I had taken to protect myself and everyone on board. I am not a soothsayer. I am only a human being. And that will wrap up another episode, and I want to thank all of you for joining us. For now, I would like to thank Bradley G. for sending in his story to share with us. You were very fortunate to get out of that one, Bradley. We are all very relieved that you're now safe. As I say many times, people are indeed the most unpredictable creatures on this earth. 
And with that, we'll see you all in the next episode of Misadventure, That Adventure. Ugh, this coffee tastes like wine. I wonder how they messed that one up. Perhaps I don't want to know. Thank you, everyone, and good night, or good day, but definitely, God bless. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to click that bell icon to be notified when more videos will be uploaded to the channel. Also, please consider browsing around the channel to check out my other videos that were posted previously. In the meantime, I wish you all a wonderful and a blessed day. Please take care, stay safe, and talk to you all again soon.